A husband is filing for divorce from his wife because she doesn't yeah. clean. A black woman has praised former President Donald Trump at an event. A black woman has praised former President Donald Trump at an event for HBCUs as historically black colleges and universities. Check this out. Well, we took care of those yeah. colleges. And sure did, sure did. Much yeah. better than Biden did. So I was like, <laughs> this is Clark and Random, this is Stoneman, yeah. this is Morehouse, this is Morris Roman, wow. all Isn't that great? So I don't care what the media tells you, Mr. Trump. Right. We support you. Uh, we support you. Uh, we support you. Okay, 4 p.m. We've been 4 p.m. Come here, let me give you a hug. Please do. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Number one, there's nothing more that there's nothing that Trump loves more than when people love him. So I'm not surprised at that reaction. But let's let's really dig into this and let's really, really think about it. Um, first of all, and you know, like I said, I you know, I'm an independent. Um, I am not a registered, I like, I've like literally re-registered as an independent, like the, the whole thing. Because what I didn't want to do is I don't want to spend my time in 2024 being like some like brain dead Trump booster that is just like, rah, rah, Trump is great about everything and, and all of that other stuff. Like, I just don't think that it really serves a purpose unless you just, I don't know, want to be like running comms for Trump for the rest of your entire existence, which is not what I want to do. But that being said, I got to keep it real about a couple of things. First of all, what Trump did for HBCUs, that a lot of people on the left have just, when Republicans do something good for black people or LGBT people or whoever, um, what the left does is they will not lie about this, but they will ignore it. And so what Trump did when he was president, and, and I will die on the hill that Trump and the people that were in his office at the time made a lot of overtures to African-American voters, a lot of overtures to African-American voters, both um, in proposal and in policy. And one of the things that he did was he absolutely made funding for HBCUs permanent at the federal level. This is something that he did. And now what the Biden administration does and what the liberals and the left can do is they can have all these events at White House and they can, you know, pull all these celebrities in. I think that they use the cast of a different world uh, for an HBCU photo op at the White House and Kamala Harris made some. They're really good at spin. They're really good at making it seem as if they did the things that were already done before they came back. And if you are a low info voter, if you are low IQ or, or under informed, which unfortunately not low IQ, but what, unfortunately what I will say is a lot of black Americans in this country are pretty under informed and uninformed when it comes to political stuff, because there's so few people they can go to that are not trying to just like propagandize them in favor of one side or the other, right? So there's a lot of people like every paid black liberal mouthpiece that has any kind of media position right now is basically trying to propagandize you to be pro-Democrat and against Republicans. Like that's what they're doing. And a lot of the black people, and I got to tell you, a lot of the black people that are super, super, super hardcore pro-Trump just basically exist to be sycophants and apologists for everything, right? And so what I try to do is I try to keep it real and try to call the balls or the strikes. And the reality of the situation is that what he did for HBCUs did help and continues to help to this day. A lot of black people are not going to know that. Now, here's something interesting from a policy perspective and actually even from a get out the vote or, or voter targeting perspective is that black women are the least likely to vote for Trump. Now, when people talk about Trump and the black vote and all this other stuff, like they're talking about black men. Black men are low hanging fruit for Trump. All right. Black women are harder. And so the question is, should it, does it make any sense at all for them to even target black women? I don't know. But if they wanted to, they could probably start with the HBCUs and the education capacity. And I make this point again a million times. Uh, one of the reasons that Ron DeSantis is governor of Florida and not Andrew Gillum is because of pro-school choice black women in Florida. All right. Um, they voted for 
Ron DeSantis in numbers that are much higher than were expected. And I think that they were one of the things that helped move the needle for DeSantis in Florida. Very interesting factoid. So look, there is like this is a viral moment. It's a cool viral moment. If I was on the if like if I was working for the Trump team or whatever, I would immediately clip that out there and be like, okay, what is a basic sort of like what is some something basic that he did that can be spun or at least elevated to make people remember what he did. And like this is one of those opportunities there, which I haven't seen it. So I guess we're just going to have to chalk that up as a missed opportunity. But there's something here um, in terms of black messaging when it comes to the education thing, the school choice thing, and the HBCU thing. And I'll be very curious to see you know, if the Trump team picks up on that. A husband is filing for divorce from his wife because she doesn't clean. And he took the TikTok to uh, put her on blast. Why are you doing this? I'm not letting you. I'm on my knees. And you still ain't cleaned up or nothing. You still got this. I'm all. not letting you go. I don't have time for this. I got. I'm not letting you go. Bro, can you can you please put, move? Put the bag down. Put the bag down, okay? Put, you, you ain't got to feel you? Why are you, you, you grabbing all me. my legs, huh? Okay. Listen, Ooh, what listen, are you doing? listen. Just hear me out. What? Can you move, please? Hear me out. I come over to get some more stuff. I'm finna go. I'm I'm not in the mood today. You people done pissed me off. Twelve you don't hours shift. I don't I'm miss pregnant. You. I'm pregnant. I don't believe you. I don't believe. I, I showed you the ultrasound. What you mean? Look at all this. What, look at all this what trash. You mean? I showed stuff. you the ultrasound. Look, look at all I'm, this. You, look, 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 look. You don't see the the gnats in here flying around in here stuff. I'm throwing it away. I'm cleaning up as we speak. People, I'm on my people, knees. People say anything just to keep no. Y'all, I don't even know where to where I, I I don't even know where to start. First of all, I just that house was disgusting. That was nasty. Like this is the you the, the, that was their bedroom, right? Like gnats flying around, clothes, dirty clothes, clean clothes everywhere, nasty plates of food going around. Like it was nasty. And that woman, honestly, to tell you the truth, you can you can tell by the way that she looks and the way that she obviously doesn't take care of herself that she doesn't know how to take care of a house. All right. And so the question is, first of all, a lot of different things going on here. If you're going to leave your wife because she keeps a nasty house, why are y'all taking this stuff to social media? Why does everybody in the era that we live in right now, where everybody's looking for a viral moment, everybody wants to have social media fame, everybody wants to do everything to be a celebrity or have some social media fame, except for to do the work, to actually create something that people want to consume. So this dude is going to put his nasty house in that nasty bedroom, in this woman on social media to be like, I'm divorcing my wife because she isn't clean. So first of all, like I'm going to get to her in a second, but first of all, even putting your stuff out there like that in that way on social media, like that's red flag, like that's a no-go. Second of all, we have things twisted, I think, as a culture, and this is, you know, this is, you know, talking about the heterosexuals here, the heterosexuals Y'all are, trust me, the gays got a lot of work to do. But the heterosexuals, y'all ain't that far behind us because y'all seem to be very confused about the roles of men and women in relationships. And I think that that's because, you know, we've got this idea that we put in the women's heads that they can, that number one, they're the ultimate prize and they don't have to do anything or bring anything to a relationship but apparently themselves because that's so great and so that's the kind of mentality and that's the kind of behavior and mindset that leads to this woman having a house that looks that nasty because that was disgusting it was disgusting if like in my place if i've got a couple dishes in the sink like i just feel like i start feeling edgy because you just it's that edginess that you feel like when you're in a space that is not clean and so imagine if she's not cleaning the if she's having the house look like that, how do you think her hygiene is? Like, how do you think that she carries herself in public? It's all of these different things. We are lying to women 
about the things that men really want. And we are really, truly, truly doing black women a total disservice, by the way, in how the culture, particularly black culture, treats black women. Like, I do not believe that we do them any favors because the way black culture treats black women is that these are the deities. Oh, my God. The black women are the pillars of the community. Nothing would happen without them. Oh, we worship you, queen, mother goddess of the African Wakanda. We worship you. And so they are never to be criticized. They are never to be, um, their, their behavior is never to be questioned. And so this is the mindset of black women in this day and age. Like that's the mindset. And so when you have that mindset and you have women that actively buy into this, then you're going to have a woman that doesn't want to clean up the house. And a woman that is perfectly fine living in that, which is like squalor. Look, if the dude is out here making money and working and earning, the least he is entitled to is a clean house. Like, I just, is that controversial? Like, am I like, am I far right now? Am I, am I a right wing lunatic? Or is it fair to say that if a man is out here, like really hustling, really doing work, like, man, can he just get a clean house? Can he not have to swat away gnats from three day old food when he's trying to, to get in the bed? It's nasty. All right, the far left LGBTQ propaganda organization, the Human Rights Campaign, has launched out for Biden and Harris to bully gays and lesbians and assorted of the other BTQ to vote for Joe Biden in 2024. Uh, and, and they've done this by a very cringe launch video. Here it is. We are so excited to launch out for Biden and Harris. As the great Harvey Milk once said, Rights are won only by those who make their voices heard. And because you made your voices heard, marriages are more secure. And Joe Biden is our president. A president who elevated LGBTQI plus leaders to every level of our administration, who fights for the safety and freedom and dignity of all people every single day. We believe LGBTQ plus rights are human rights. We will do what we have always done in this movement, in this community, which is collectively, we will continue to build unity. We will continue to build coalition. We will always be fueled by knowing we have so much more in common than what separates us. We will be fueled by knowing we are all in this together. What can you do? Please text out to 30330 to join us. If you're watching that on my YouTube page or anything like that, don't text. Don't text that number to join them. Don't have me out here doing uh, <laughs> doing propaganda, doing PR for these people. Look, there's a lot of different things going on here. The first thing that I have to say is that at this point, there's no real movement for gays and lesbians on the left. There is only a movement um, to amplify, elevate, and normalize the TQ fringe. I've said this before, and I will say it again. Gays and lesbians have every right that you could possibly have in the United States of America. Gays and lesbians can serve openly in the military. Gays and lesbians can get married. Gays and lesbians and all LGBT people, in fact, are protected from employment discri discrimination federally um, because three Trump-appointed justices, by the way, voted in favor of adding LGBT people to the Civil Rights Act, which is another one of those things that when anything happens for, if you want to say LGBT people, gays and lesbians, whatever, if anything good that happens for um, a minority group of people during a Republican administration, like if this ever happens, um, it's generally downplayed or ignored because these people depend on low info, low IQ voters for them to propagandize. I've said that over and over and over again. Now, the unfortunate thing is that so few people are aware of these things. I, my best friend in the world is a dyed in the wool. I like to call them Obama liberals, right? Like a, a, a big city liberal, say your New York, LA, Boston, DC, uh, particularly like a, a gay guy or something like that, is going to be like an Obama lib where they know that they're liberal, but they really don't get into what the fringes are doing or what the grassroots is doing, whatever. They just kind of like check the D 
um, and, and keep on going. And so my best friend is an Obama lib. And I brought this up in conversation one time. I was like, well, you know, um, LGBT people have been added to the Civil Rights Act. And this is what happened, you know, under the Supreme Court uh, right after the his last justice, which who I believe was Amy Coney Barrett, was confirmed maybe before. But I, I told him this and he was like, what? Oh, my God. Really? No, I don't. I don't think so. And I was like, yeah, I, I Googled it. An NPR article came up. He had to see it from NPR, by the way. That's what, you know, your your Obama libs have to see something from NPR before they believe it. But yeah, it was completely true. And the reason he didn't know this, and, and I said the same thing to him, the reason you didn't know this is because you weren't supposed to know this. And so there is a very, very effective propaganda machine that exists on the left to sort of brainwash the younger gays and lesbians and the TQ fringe into thinking that there is in no way, shape, or form that they could, that they become... Uh, you know, citizens with with full rights in this country without uh, the Democrats because the Democrats are doing it all and Republicans ever did nothing. And of course, that's a lie. It's just not true. But the unfortunate thing about this is this. HRC basically acts as the Democrat super PAC with a $700 million war chest, right? And so they have the money for this propaganda. That's how the human rights campaign acts, uh, even though they are technically a nonprofit. And unfortunately, there is nothing similar that exists on the right side of the aisle. There is nothing that comes even close to that on the right. So it just pretty much becomes uh, the responsibility of, you know, your sort of right-leaning gay uh, talking heads, political figures, whatever you want to call it, to sort of try to be a barrier to uh, this leftist propaganda. And like I said, gays and lesbians have already won. So the Biden administration and their toadies are doing nothing for the average gay and lesbian American. But they're really doing a lot for the TQ fringe, particularly the T. They're all about the T nowadays. I don't know um, if there's space in that movement for any regular gay or lesbian. I, I just do not believe that that exists anymore. Now, in 2020... Um, gays and lesbians voted about 70-30 for Democrats as opposed to Republicans. Like So 30% of gays and lesbians voted for Republicans. I do believe that what they would love is for those numbers to be like black people, like 90% of, of gays and lesbians voting for Democrats all the time. Like That's what the propaganda really wants. I don't really see it happening. I get a lot of gays and lesbians that come up to me that say things like, I used to hate you, but now I understand where you're coming from. I secretly agree with you, all that stuff. So time will tell as to what gays and lesbians will do um, in the ballot box in November. All right, Problematics, thank you so much for joining me. As always, you can find Can't Cancel Rob Smith here on YouTube. Please watch, share, and subscribe. Helps the algorithm, helps me out, helps push the content out. You can also find an audio version of this podcast on Apple Podcasts, iHeart Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Rob Smith Online, and on TikTok at Can't Cancel Rob. I'll see you next time.